Hi, this is Scott with Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. Today, we're going to talk about the five most important safety features on your chainsaw. Some of them you might be surprised at. First thing we're going to talk about, we might as well start with the biggest thing first, is the chain brake. Most people know, if you've had a chainsaw at all, how the chain brake works. Your chain rotates around the bar. If the chain brake goes forward, it's supposed to lock the chain up. This feature should be tested. And I know a lot of you are thinking, well, I test it every time I, I start my chainsaw because I always start my chainsaw with my chain brake on. And that is a good idea. Before we go any further, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. When you're getting ready to start your chainsaw, typically it's sitting with the chain brake off. You want to put the chain brake on. There's three different ways that are safe to start your chainsaw. One, you set it on the ground, put your foot, foot through this back stirrup and crank it. Two, they call the crotch clamp method where you hold it between your knees. It's still an approved method and it's still safe as long as the chain brake is engaged to do what they call a drop start, which means to hold this handlebar in your left hand, start a cord in your right, make sure the switch is on, and drop. <laughs> But believe it or not, that is not the approved way to check your chain brake. Most people wrongly assume that you have to touch that lever for the chain brake to engage. So they would think that the chainsaw would have to come all the way around and your wrist would engage that. That's too slow. A lot of people would get cut if that's how a chain brake actually worked. So if you give me a second, we're going to go find a, a nice good stump and I'll show you how it's supposed to be tested. One of the best things about the correct way to test your chain brake is you don't even have to have the saw running. Most people don't realize this handle actually works on what's called inertia, or a sudden stop, or a sudden hit, or force. So if you take your chain, you make sure it's in the off, chain brake is in the off position, so it'll rotate. Don't even bother to start the chainsaw, and you find yourself a stump, or a block of wood, Lift it approximately a foot, 18 inches off that piece of wood. I know this looks bad, but trust me, it won't hurt anything. Let go with your front hand or your left hand. And I'm gonna allow this to drop down and allow the end of the bar to strike on that wooden stump while still holding onto it with my right hand. You guys ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Now, that probably didn't look too dramatic, but guess what? It set the chain brake off. So I'm gonna do that one more time. Chain brake is off. 18 inches or so off the end of the stump. I'm gonna let go with the right hand and let it fall. And as you can see, locked up tight. So if you do that two or three times, and that chain brake doesn't engage at least once. You really should be taking it into a shop and getting somebody to look at it, adjust it, or replace whatever parts are worn out. Could just be dirty and need to be cleaned. If you didn't know that that's how to test your chain brake, it's no big deal. I know people that have run a chainsaw their whole life that don't know about that. But that is the way you're supposed to test your chain brake. So now we're gonna move on to number two. Safety feature number two, believe it or not, is this little device right here. It's like a little metal clip. Doesn't really do anything. You can see it's right here. And it's on the outside of your chain, on the inside of your cover. What that is, is a chain catcher. A lot of times, when you're running a saw, the chain will get hot, especially if you're limbing, and the chain will stretch, and it'll get loose. And you'll turn that saw just right if you're in the middle of a limb and it'll throw the chain right completely off the bar and the chain will come flying down around well 
This is to stop that from coming back up and wrapping around your hand. It won't go any farther than this. It'll go straight down. It may come back and hit you in the leg, but you'll be wearing your chaps. It won't cut them because the chain will be stopped. It'll just, it'll feel like somebody hitting you in the leg with a stick. If it's not there, there's nothing to stop this chain from coming all the way back to your hand. Trust me, you don't want a, a saw chain wrapped around your hand, whether it's spinning or not, because they are sharp and it will hurt. So the chain catcher, on all your professional saws, they're replaceable. It's actually a wear item. You can, uh, you can go buy a new one and bolt on. Some of your farm and ranch saws, they're made right on the side of the cover, but there usually still is a way that you can replace them. Sometimes they're made out of nylon, the pro saws are metal. As long as there's something there that stops that chain from coming right back to your rear handlebar, that's the important part. So that's number two. Safety feature number three is gonna be a properly functioning throttle assembly, meaning it has more than one lever. You can't pull the trigger without making sure your hand is wrapped around the handlebar. Once, once you've depressed this top button, you can fully engage the throttle and open the saw up. Without it, it won't go above an idle. So you wanna make sure that all that stuff works prior to running your chainsaw. You don't want it so that, you know, you accidentally squeeze and have the saw take off or a limb goes up in there and hits that trigger and it can make the saw take off. You, you don't want any of that. And actually, the certified logging professional courses will teach you that if you're gonna take more than one step, meaning if you're gonna move both your feet from wherever you're standing, one full step, one pace, always engage your chain brake, always. That keeps you if, you, if you trip, fall down, keeps you from accidentally squeezing and having the saw and the chain take off. Very good practice. If you're gonna take more than a step, engage that chain brake every time. It gets to be a habit after a while. You don't even think about it. So number three, properly function throttle assembly. Our fourth feature is gonna be these spikes, these barbs. They're called bucking spikes or felling spikes, depending on who you talk to. That's kind of an East Coast, West Coast thing. They're not an absolute necessity, but they are a good safety feature, especially if you're really learning how to run a saw and haven't run one much. You always wanna keep the wood in as close to the bar, or to the saw head as you can, provided you're not gonna put your, your bar into the ground or the dirt, that is. And once you're in the wood, if these spikes, if you can push them into the log, it's gonna give you an extra something to grab if the, if the saw tries to kick, it's gonna help hold it down. You can actually put those spikes into the log and then once that spike is there, you can rotate it on that one point and it gives you a, a real good feeling of control. I don't know how else to put it, but uh, I would call them a safety feature and that's why I chose to include them in this video. So that's number four, felling spikes or bucking spikes. Okay, safety feature number five is gonna really upset some of you armchair chainsaw guys. I, I know, I know, it's a lot of people's hobby. It's not mine. Uh, to me, a chainsaw is a tool, it's not a race car, it's not a toy. So here's my take on safety feature number five. A properly functioning, unmodified, stock muffler. These mufflers have spark arresters in them so you don't set the woods on fire. They're very, uh, very complicated inside. If you look, you can see the screen in there and they're designed for this saw. The manufacturer designed this muffler for the saw for the optimum tuning for this motor. I know guys love to open them up and they'll put a big old stack on the side of it and say, oh, my saw's modified and I got this and that. You know what, that's fine. You're losing some of your safety features when you do that. I choose to go and buy the professional saw, buy the, saw, the size that's the saw I want, that has the power that I want to start with. Then I run that saw in the stock configuration till it is worn out. In a lot of states, it's actually illegal to work in the woods with a modified exhaust system. They're made the way they are for a reason. It's best to leave them the hell alone. And that's safety feature number five. 
Okay, so that's our five features, our five safety features for today, with the uh, chain brake being a surprise that most no one knows about how, how to check it. Um, hopefully I haven't made too many people too awfully mad. They're my opinions. Like I said, to me, they're not toys, they're not race cars. It's a tool, and it's made for a specific purpose, and that's the way it gets used. I actually should probably do a review video on this little saw. I've had it for almost two years now. I'd like to thank you for stopping by. Once again, this is Scott from Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. If you like our videos, please like and subscribe. Ring the bell. Check out our affiliate links. Have a nice day. Take care.